three, two, one, and we are live. What's up, CP family? Chad here with Andrew for the tie breaker series 112. Welcome to the show. We're going to switch it up a little bit. Usually this is a Q&A. If you have questions, send them, but we're going to switch it up a little bit today and, and do a little story time, a little story time. <laughs> you know, we, we had a lot of conversation this past weekend and, and the, pa the past couple of days on just reflecting back on our personal journeys through training and high level development with athletics in our personal background. And we wanted to share some of the insights and maybe stories that we experienced so that we can pass it on to our athletes and they can learn from that. So with that being said, Andrew, you were a bad dude when it came to, to soccer. It took that to a really, really high level, um, top, top ranked junior in the world or in, in, in America rather, um, high, high level division one soccer player. What's, Looking back, if you could extract any nuggets of wisdom from your experience to pass on to a lot of our CP athletes that are maybe feeling similar things or in similar situations, what's something you can pass on to them based on your past experience of training? It's a good question. Um... There was, there was a time when, um, there was a time when I was, when I was in college and I was playing and, uh, I, I had a nickname on the, on the FIU soccer team. My nickname was the practice assassin, uh, because from day one I would come in and I would destroy in practice. I would destroy everybody in practice. I would, I would light up the field. Um, I played striker and so I would, I would have some phenomenal finishes and that was kind of my nickname. And it was kind of a funny thing and subconsciously in hindsight, it kind of, it kind of played some mind games with me because I began to struggle with transferring from, from the, you know, the practice field and, and bringing it to the, to the, to the match. Um, and you know, that kind of, that dynamic kind of started my journey and why I really dove into the psychology behind performance and, and really understanding the whole mental game and, the, and performance training and things like that. Um, but when, at, at a certain point, there was one thing that I like, I couldn't do. I couldn't do this one thing. And it's kind of complicated. Um, as a striker, you need to be able to check back to the midfield, receive the ball, hold it for long enough, let your team push up, and then maintain possession. And I was a really small person. And so I have a naturally lean build. Right now, I'm about 170 pounds. My playing weight was 140 pounds. When I was when I was playing in college, so I'm playing against people that are that are 220 pounds sometimes. So you know, to be able to control the ball and and body off someone that's 80 pounds heavier than you is was a really challenging thing for me. And plus, it brought up a whole load of things that I worked on as a kid of being too skinny and everything like that. So it was, it was putting pressure on a lot of different insecurities. Um, looking back at it in hindsight, it didn't really connect when I was back there. But I, I just couldn't get this one thing down. And the crazy thing is, is nobody trained as much as me. There wasn't one person on the team that even remotely trained as much as I did. I was up at five o'clock in the morning, my face hit the pillow at midnight. I mean, you know, I, I was a, schedule, a scheduled person. There was not a minute of waste of time in that period. And so it was just go, 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 go. Besides the three hours of, of time that we would play as a team, I would be you know, I'd be training sometimes two to three hours on my own, not including physical training, not including meditation. Simply, I would actually go to the basketball court and I would kick the ball against the, the wall and control it and turn and just practice that move over and 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 over again. And I could do it flawlessly. I could do it flawlessly. But for some reason, there was this block that I couldn't do this in the match. I just, I, I felt the pressure and I just, I didn't understand how to under, overcome mental blocks. It, did, it made no sense to me. And I, and it's like, okay, I just got to train more. And it's like, I would do it flawlessly, didn't transfer. And so I actually called up Bethany and I was like, what do I do? And she gave me some advice. She's like, because it, really what would happen is in the match, it got bad and then it started to affect my practice. So even in the actual practice, I started not being able to do it because 
the way the collegiate soccer season is set, you cannot make a mistake. You are like, if you start making mistakes, you're sitting on the bench and you're you're not playing that season. The season is so short. So there, there's a lot of pressure in practice during the fall season. Like you go to every single practice like you're playing a match. It's, it's extremely competitive to get the starting spots um, for that week or for that weekend. And so it started to affect my practice play. The practice assassin wasn't quite on point. And so I called up Beth and I was like, what, <laughs> what do I do? I completely didn't know what to do. And she was like, I want you to go out the next practice and I want you to not try as hard as you possibly can. I want you to literally not care as, as, as much as you possibly can. I do not want you to break a 30% sprint. I don't want you to run faster than that. And I was like, at first I was like, that's kind of impossible. Like, you need to be able to move. I don't know if you understand the game of soccer, you got to move. And I decided to do it. I was like, all right, let's just, why, why not? And so I just embraced this, this like nonchalant, not rushing behavior. And just by doing that, by bringing my concentration to just taking my time with things, it not only cleared my mind, but I had one of the best practices of my entire life. I mean, my coaches, they, they were saying weird things. They were like, you were, they would first were yelling at me for not moving. And I kind of just ignored them and just like kind of kept doing my thing. And then they, and then the, by the end of the practice, it was just like, like I had a ton of compliments because I, I scored several goals and it was, it was, just, I had a phenomenal practice. It was one of the best practices of my entire life. And it was that moment probably changed the trajectory of my life. Think, looking back at that, because it was like, wait a second, my whole life, I've been told you need to try harder. Effort is how you get to where you're going. And although that is a major piece of the puzzle, can't do anything without effort, can't do anything without action. The biggest mistake that people make when it comes to struggling in performance is over trying. They're not, they're trying too hard. They're too attached to the result or the destination of what they want. And for me, getting good at that specific thing was essential to become a professional soccer player. It's like, you can't do that. No it's impossible. You cannot play professional soccer if you cannot do that thing as a striker. It's the most, one of the most important things to do. And so it was like this like huge role. It wasn't just this thing I was struggling with. It was this roadblock in my career. Like it was this daunting mountain where I was just like, this is a problem. If I don't learn to do this, kiss professional soccer goodbye. And it, it, I put... I put this thing on a pedestal, but so much pressure on myself. Really what the mistake I made was not just embracing that part of the process. It's like, this is just where I'm at. This is the thing I, I get to struggle with right now. I guarantee you, you talk to Cristiano Ronaldo, you talk to Messi, you talk to Roger Federer, these people, they're working on something. They're just, you're in a part of the process and this is what I'm working on. So that's a big mistake that I made, just putting a ton of pressure on that. Um, but that worked not trying and, and for the athletes that are listening i usually give that advice sometimes when people are just like they're just it's, they're looking at this thing as too much of a mental block too much of a problem sometimes the best first step is to simply stop trying and so it opened up my eyes to a whole new world of of performance where it's not just about effort it's about this balance of intensity but also effortlessness that's this like flow state where if you think about your child playing when they're playing their absolute best that's the state they're in. They're not over trying. They're not really forcing it and absolutely doing that. It's just this natural flow that's kind of coming out them. And it's this balance between being really intense, but also keeping your composure and not necessarily rushing it. When we are in this state of rushing, we're trying to move out of the present moment. And so anytime we're trying to get something done or trying to get past something, it's a self-defeating process. We're going out of the place that the solution exists. And the solution is to sit back, kind of rest and settle into the present moment and just accept what you're working on, accept what, what might not be there. And sometimes and not caring for me was, was, was the thing. And, and what was absolutely, uh, what was really funny is like one week later. So one week later, um, my, head, my head coach made me super nervous for some reason. I don't know, whenever he was watching, it just made me super nervous. And, um, I was out on the practice field first. Obviously, I was always out there first. And I just love being out there first. And I was kind of just sitting there. And he came out. And usually he comes out like he doesn't come out right away. And I was like, oh, hey, what's up, man? And um, 
we're at half field on the sideline, okay? So we're very far from the goal, very far from the goal. And he like turned to me and he's like, you think I can hit the crossbar? And I was like, no. And he hit it, he played professional soccer. He hit it, missed it. And I was like, um, I bet I can. And he's like, I don't know, man. I was like, watch, hit it, hit that. We're talking, this is like a 70, 60 or 70 yard shot. Line drive, perfect backspin technique right into the center of the crossbar. And I just like looked at him and he was just like, stone cold, man, stone cold. And it was just like, it was such a weird thing, like coming off that practice, like the week prior and like going into that. And it was just like, yeah, man, this was up. So um, yeah, it was really funny, but we're just, we're just trying too much. We're just, we're trying to prove ourselves. We're trying to, we're trying to earn, we're trying too much of trying to make things happen rather than just like letting things happen. You're growing, you're developing, you're improving, things are happening. And if you don't enjoy the process, the process is gonna, the, the process isn't gonna work as well. You're gonna start compromising the process. You need to keep that joy and that love in what you're doing. And uh, I just magnified the problem too much. Just got way too, too absorbed in the problem. Yeah, that's crazy. That's probably like, really interesting advice coming from a professional athlete to try less but like it makes sense too because like not to downplay effort you know effort can take you really far but once you get far and you look around once you get to a certain level effort's not really an issue for anyone around here you're talking like no one is making the professional tour or or, or what have you without effort so now what do you what do you deal you 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 it's almost like juniors and younger people today are just used to the advice of more more reps put in more effort wake up earlier and like that's the solution and and it does work to a very big extent i'm not downplaying that but at a certain point everyone's putting in effort what mm -hmm. what to do now and so i think that's really um crazy that you went through that because that gives you a, a distinct advantage talking to these athletes that the majority of athletes in junior tennis struggle with performing better in practice and then doing competitions due to mental blocks that's it and so that's awesome that you had hands-on um experience with that and had to on a personal level kind of go through it and, and figure your way out F effort you know the, the number one I th thing i hear all the time from parents and coaches they want greater levels of effort. And effort isn't necessarily the solution. It's, it's actually usually not the solution. If someone's not motivated or not putting in the effort, it's because they're in a state of fear, they're in a state of security, and the, the stress levels in their body are preventing them from really committing and getting into a vulnerable position and, and, and embracing a difficulty or a challenge. It, has, it really usually doesn't have anything to do with work ethic or motivation, and a lot of times, saying that it's work ethic can, can feed the problem. Think, just think about it like this. What's driving your effort? Is it love for the game or fear of a result? And you're gonna realize that fear is driving a lot of your effort. And so that effort, wherever you're placing that effort, it's energized by that fear. It's, it's self-sabotage. It puts you in this vicious cycle where it destroys how you feel about yourself. You begin to not trust yourself. And so just lay off the gas with the effort. It's not like when someone loves playing their sport, they work hard. They're motivated. They're optimistic. They have a good attitude. They fight for every ball. It's a natural consequence. So what should be addressed is let's look beneath the surface into the core issue of do they have an insecurity? Are they, are they struggling with something? Do they not feel capable enough? Are they seeing it too much of a problem and not necessarily as this unique part of the process they're in that it's just their job to embrace and, and, and experience it and, and, and move through it? Um, and so a lot of times it's just, it's just the wrong direction. Effort is, is usually not the solution. Effort is a consequence of loving what you're doing, and that is usually what's gonna correct the, the core issue, is, is shifting from this state of fear in what you're doing to enjoying it and loving, that, and loving the process of playing. Yeah, that's huge. And I think we, just growing up in this, this family and had like effort was always there. Like we, we can give you a glimpse of how we trained and how 
just being around Bethany and the example, I mean, she was a, pro, a professional athlete when we were very young still. And like just seeing that example of like what the training level is, it's, it's like, it's a whole nother. What's interesting is I was actually thinking about saying that the first time I went and trained with Bethany, I think I was like 12 and obviously had great effects. I got to see how professionals trained. It had a negative consequence. I immediately held myself to a standard and said, I'm not allowed to be a kid. I'm not allowed to slack off. I'm not allowed to not be doing every, like it, I pull way, I just like that. That's how I'm supposed to train. Okay, let me try to do that. And I was in this constant chase. And that's how it manifested. It manifested in, in being too attached to the destination that I was sacrificing for. Rather than as all, like I was just saying, coming back and, and enjoying that process. Gotcha. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else to add on that? Um, no, I want I want to hear I want to hear some I want to hear some of your stories. I mean, you you dropped a story on me a week ago, and I was legitimately mad. Maybe we'll save this story for another time, but I was legitimately mad at taking this long to tell me that story. That story changed a huge perspective in my mind. Uh, maybe you can share that story or a different story, but I know you got a lot of them. Um, I got a lot of brain. stories. I got, I got, a, lo- I got a lot of stories. Um, a lot of stories training, training with Bethany, but I think I'll go to, let's, let's see here, what, 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 should, I, what should I share? Um, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know if I want to break. Let's see how much time we have left. We got... I've already went like 20 minutes or so, so I'll probably keep it a little short. But um, yeah, just kind of going like one, one thing I learned, I, I learned a lot, you know, playing sports. And there was a unique, you know, transition of like training for a sport and then like now it's time to train for the Marine Corps. And in, in that transition, I started doing a lot of martial arts, which is kind of like, it's a sport in a sense, but it's also a nice segue into training to be an actual warrior, you know, in the Marine Corps. And so I have a lot of lessons from, from, from my martial arts, um, you know, training. And we, we, have a, we have a neighbor here that's, he's a, he's a black belt in judo, black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and he was a Marine Corps vet. And so when he knew I was going to the Marine Corps, he kind of took me under his wing and, uh, and, and really trained me at a top academy here called America Top Team. And I remember um, the first thing he taught me to do, which, and if any of you have martial arts, I know some of our players, shout out Chase, does some martial arts <laughs> training, um, you know, in, with, with their tennis as well. And the first thing he taught me is um, to, before you step on the mat, you bow to the mat. And I was like, that's, that's like, that's like kind of crazy. And then this other guy, um, like just kind of like walked on the mat and he didn't bow on. I was like, why didn't that guy like bow? And he said, okay, well, let me just just do it if you want to. I would recommend bowing to the mat and just setting the tone for like the respect that you have, that you get to like sharpen your mind and body like in this place like kind of it kind of like makes the place like a little bit more special and like sets your attention for training and that was like really impactful for me and a lot of the martial arts history goes into you know into the Japanese culture where they bow a lot and everything like that and it's interesting because like at the academy there's wrestlers that are more American and then there's jiu-jitsu guys that are not so American and the jiu-jitsu guys would always bow and the wrestlers would always not bow because that was just their background and I and I reflect it was really impactful because it, it, it put my training to another level just doing this whole bowing thing but um I, I I was reflecting on like why some people the wrestlers weren't bowing and I think it has a lot to do with the culture that they were coming from with their sports development of just like, just let's get it done and results. Whereas the more traditional martial arts culture is more of a internal process and a self-development process. And it was like really interesting that, that, that there's like two differences. And, you know, I'm not saying you need to bow before you go on the tennis court, 
but you when someone comes to train for the first time in our in our gym we definitely make a comment of like this is a special place special things happen on here and just kind of having this reverence for what you're doing and this respect for what you're doing and this just just sit there and and soak in that you're playing a game on a, a on a planet on in space like that's what you're doing that's what you're doing it kind of like puts it in perspective right it puts everything like in perspective when you just add this like little bow before you train and it's a really um crazy thing i was thinking about uh implementing that a little bit we do it a little bit to a little extent with our athletes that come here but it's amping up the the perspective of, of your training and and the uh, I think it'll put it'll help a lot of people. It'll put it in the right frame of mind. You don't necessarily need to bow, but just having respect for like what you're doing. That's something that really stuck out in my training, in my like athletic training. Yeah, I mean that that reminds me of you know something Tim always says of your stroke is sacred. Mm. Like when you think about your stroke, a lot of times the first thing that comes to your mind is all the things that are wrong with it. What am I changing about it? What's not good enough? This thing keeps messing up. My backhand sucks. Like, this, like It's just like, your stroke is sacred. This is like your thing. This is your process. This is, this is Michelangelo's paintbrush. Like what, do you, like, what do you mean there's something wrong with it? Do you think, you know, Da Vinci just got mad at like, himself? No, like... like this is, these are like, this is like, treat it like a sacred process. Respect it. Like, this is what you're doing. You're creating art, like, through, through a sport, and you're going through a process and using this as a vehicle to, to grow and to develop. And it's like, that demands a level of respect, not to mention, it's like, put it into perspective. You're playing a game. This is fun. This is enjoyable. Like, enjoy the process of it. You're already growing, it's already happening let it happen and, and begin to enjoy the process and get lost in it. and you'll realize when you get lost in it the motivation comes the work ethic comes you fight for every ball you 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 grind it out through the hard times and things just work out a little bit better and so it's yeah it's right in line with that that's epic yeah um hey guys let us know if you like this whole story time because i try, i got a lot we we got we got tons of stories that you can extract a lot of lessons and just perspective with so let us know if you like it otherwise we can go back to just like teaching like teaching <laughs> concepts and everything like that but i hope you guys took away some some nuggets there we'll see you guys on the next tiebreaker peace take care guys